Everyone has a story to tell. We connect and relate to one another when we share our stories. My name is Amelia Old, and I am your host of Voices of Inspiration. Join me as I share stories of friends, family, and strangers from my everyday life and travels. You will laugh, possibly cry, but walk away feeling connected more than ever to those around you and ready to be the change our world needs. Everyone has a story to tell. What's yours? Welcome to the latest episode of Voices of Inspiration, where I share stories of people and places from around the world. On today's episode, we're taking you back to Albemarle, North Carolina, and introducing you to a hidden gem of a business that you won't want to miss. Mary Wasaki's Custom Apparel Shop offers a unique and personalized experience for customers looking for one-of-a-kind clothing. Mary's journey to entrepreneurship is one of determination and creativity. Born and raised in Albemarle, Mary dropped out of college and worked her way up in corporate America, but found herself searching for a creative outlet. It was through her passion for making custom wooden signs that she discovered her true calling in custom apparel. With her personal touch and attention to detail, Mary's shop is a must-visit destination when in Albemarle. Join us as we learn more about this business, the woman behind it, and the story behind it, including the challenges of infertility that Mary faced and how she turned her passion into a thriving enterprise. Thank you so much for joining me today, Mary. Yes, I'm glad to be here. I'm so glad that you're with me. You are the owner of Make It Personal Embroidery and Custom Apparel in Albemarle, North Carolina. How did you come up with the idea for this store and when did you open well, I this really just happened by accident, honestly. Back in 2014, I was looking for kind of a creative outlet. I was working in the corporate world and I started making custom signs for people. And then I long story short, I went to a festival. I was selling my wooden signs at, and I had made myself a little t-shirt to wear. And a lady approached me and was like, I want a shirt just like that. And I was like, really? <laughs> it's just like, yes. It just had like my initials on it. It was nothing crazy. So I took her information. I made the shirt. I posted it on my little Facebook page back then. And literally it, it blew up from there. It quickly as it went from custom signs to apparel in what seems like overnight. So, you know, back then I wasn't embroidering. I was just doing the heat transfer vinyl shirts. I was using an iron to make these. And you have to like really with heat transfer vinyl, not to bore you, but you have to like really put a lot of pressure on it. I didn't even know what a heat press was back then. So then I bought a heat press, was working out of my basement. And in 2015, I had outgrown my basement, my home office, and I was staying up till 3 a.m. to fill orders for Etsy and Facebook. So I paid off my car. I had $400 in the bank and I opened up my first retail location. Wow. That (laughs) happened really quickly. It really did. It was crazy. It's crazy to think about. And I've seen your Facebook. You have like 6,000 plus likes and you've just really grown. Just it, it really has. What do you think makes it unique compared to other small businesses in your area? So the beauty with Make It Personal, and I think there were signs all through my life that like this is like what I should be doing. I just didn't pay close enough attention. So the beauty of Make It Personal is a lot of print shops especially back then. There wasn't, there weren't many people doing this back then. Now there are, but you could go to a print shop, but you could never just get one shirt, just one custom shirt made. Mm -hmm. They had the minimums for screen printing. So I really got in at a really great time in this industry for that's a big part of it. So that is unique that you can come here and you can bring me a picture of yourself, a picture of your dog, hand an old handwritten note. And we can transfer those items into a physical product for you. And I think that's what makes us the most unique for sure. What a great idea, the handwritten note. Do you get that often? Yes. So handwritten recipes and handwritten notes are probably one of our best sellers, especially around Christmas, Valentine's Day. And we can make dish towels and pillows. They're really, it's a really sweet sentimental gift. 
What a cool idea. Yeah. What do you think has been your biggest challenge in, in operating the store? Aside from the pandemic, I know that that has affected a lot of businesses, especially small businesses over the last couple of years. But aside from that, what do you think has been your biggest challenge? I would say oh, there's been a lot, but well, yeah, the pandemic, we had a lot of sourcing issues. I think it's hard, but I've been very blessed and I have some of the best staff in the whole wide world and I will go up against <laughs> anyone who tells me differently. I've been really blessed with good staff over the years, but it is hard to find those good people. That's really hard. And, you know, just keeping people engaged since I would say probably 95% of our marketing is done on social media, staying on top of trends, staying current, coming up with things to post <laughs> to keep mm-hmm. people engaged. That's probably the hardest, I would say. I mean, I can relate to that. I think that we, yes. those of us that are super into digital media, it's the ever evolving <laughs> changes of keeping yes. up with those trends. What advice do you have for someone who is interested in starting a small business? Um, I would say just go for it. You know, finding a need. If there is a need, there is a business for it. So if you can find that need, someone needs a service or a product that you can make or provide, that really is. And that was what worked for us is that there was a need for a place to go and just have one or two or three shirts made, you know, put initials on kids' lunch boxes, you know, find that need in your passion and it can work. It can absolutely work. Now, a little bit of your story was shared with me prior to this interview. And I wanted to see if you are open and in, in talking about your journey prior to the store? Yes. I struggled with infertility for seven years. And like I said, before I started Make It Personal, I was working in the corporate world. I was just very, I was bored really. So instead of getting in my head about my infertility and all of that, I really put all of that energy into Make It Personal. And it was like, and a lot of people say this, but Make It Personal is and was my baby. It would not be where I am today had I not have that kind of driving force behind like, stay, you know, keep your mind busy, keep your mind busy. And then seven years later, I had a baby. That was in 2018. Yeah. I was able to keep him here at the office with me for the first year of his life. So he has grown up, you know, it's really cute. He comes in, he'll shop. He'll he's, I've had him screen print a shirt before, you know, (laughs) he's a part of our little family here. I was able to, just put that energy into the store. And I think that really was helpful to me. And I even, I've had one in particular, a girl that worked for me and she's suffering with infertility now. And I tell her all the time, like, you know, just, you know, find something if it's whatever it is that makes you feel good, whatever makes you tick, like just find those things and try to focus on those things. And it's so much easier said than done. And each journey is, your own personal journey, but I am thankful for my infertility journey because had I had a baby when I started, mm-hmm. make it personal would not, would not exist. I think that there are a lot of women out there that can relate to to that piece of your story. Do you have any other advice for for someone going through that? Well, and that's interesting too because even though I went through it, I don't know the right things to say because there was never anything anybody could tell me, you know, to make me feel better just other than, you know, keep the faith, do what you feel like you have to do, whether that's going to a doctor or trying natural things. I think it's important just to never lose, lose faith. What is your advice to someone that is supporting a woman going through infertility? How can we best support someone going through that? personally, again, this is just personally, I think not, I think a lot of people sometimes don't want to ask. And I think we are as, I think we already feel very alone in the journey. So I think actually bringing it up or just asking, Hey, you know, how's it going? What can I do? Like, I think just acknowledging that they are going through that so that they already feel so alone anyway, it would really help them feel not so alone. So not being afraid of the Absolutely. Topic. Yes. 
with your store? How do you see it evolving in, in the coming months and the coming years? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have no idea. It already evolved. <laughs> So much over the past few years, you know, I wasn't a store when I first started. And now I have like a whole retail store full of gifts and boutique clothing and that sort of thing. As I definitely want, you know, as I always talk about staying in my lane and my lane is custom mm-hmm. shirts and an embroidery. So we're going to keep, keep pushing that, you know, again, my industry changes like literally overnight. We've got really great equipment, but I'm sure in like two years, <laughs> there will be something new out and I'll, maybe I can print even more shirts at one time than I am now. But yeah, I, I who knows where the market will take me? It's just, it is ever changing. <laughs> so I'll, I, we're just along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed when you started that because all three of my children, I say to them all the time, stay in your own lane. <laughs> so when you said that, that's why I, I chuckled because my youngest is 13. So she's the only one still in school. And every morning when I take her to school, that's one of the last things I tell her before she gets out of the car. I'm like, stay in your own lane, worry about yourself. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. <laughs> so. It's so true. <laughs> yes. And it's so important because you can get caught up in, I should be doing this. I should be selling this. I should be making that. But nobody knows my customer better than I do. I have to remember my customer at all times and make sure that I'm providing what they want. And it and it gets you off track too. If you don't stay in your lane, all of a sudden your store's full of stuff that's not selling. And yeah, it's important. And, and you, in, like you said, like in life too, it's important. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you make a good point. Nobody knows your customer better than you do. And one of the other affirmations I tell her every day, even as a 13 year old is, you know, don't let anyone else's opinion determine your worth. And so, you okay. know, what's best for you, you know, what's best for your customer. And that's what you focus on. And just as a child focuses on their, you know, Absolutely. Going through. That just stuck out to me when you said that I stay in my own lane because. (laughs) Yep. It's important. (laughs) You're from Albemarle, right? Yes. Yes. What changes have you seen in that community? So I, okay. I, I, I was born, raised here. And when I was little, my grandmother would bring me downtown like one Saturday every month to this downtown and she would take me to the stores down here. One of them that like really sticks that well, there was a craft store we would always go to. And then there was a doll boutique. And I just remember it was like an experience, you know, it was like a great experience. And I remember that so well. And back then it was a lot of hustle and bustle downtown. So I've been here at this location. I think this will be my fourth year. I swear the years kind of merged together, (laughs) but it's three or four. I think it's four. And when I first moved here, it was me and one other little boutique up the street. Okay. So fast forward to last year, we now have a bar across the street from us. We have two more retail boutiques on the street or three. And then uh, another axe throwing place. It's just, it's great. It went from like nothing. New, all of a sudden, these new businesses businesses are showing interest. It's just, I really, I have high hopes for here. Otherwise, I wouldn't have moved here. <laughs> I did. So I love downtown. It is definitely growing. I think it is becoming more and more popular. We've had a few festivals this year and people showed up and they enjoyed it. They really enjoy, you know, walking around. Now we have the social district so they can enjoy a drink while they're walking. It's just really, it is really growing. And I am 100% here for it. (laughs) That's exciting. What are some of your favorite things to do in the town? Well, I do love a good cocktail. (laughs) <laughs> so I'll end beer. So I love, you know, going to the restaurants off the square and across the street, the bait and brews. I, I've been to the axe going place. Love that. That's super fun. And then the shops here are great. I'm very good friends with all the girls that run them. Really cute stuff, different things. And each one, none of us are really similar. Again, we're all just kind of staying in our own lane. But yeah, I love that. We have scooters. I have not tried out the scooters yet. I don't know. <laughs> I'm too scared to break something, you know. <laughs> so 
I need my arms to operate equipment. So yeah, I don't, I haven't tried the scooters. My employees have, they love it. So yeah, I love to just kind of meander around and love glory beans with their coffee and food. They have the best uh, grilled pimento cheese with spicy bacon. So good. Good to know. Uh, I just had them on an episode as well. So. Oh yeah. I heard you interview yeah. Connie. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the sweet shop is right up here. Mm-hmm. So They're like literally right behind us. Okay. Um, yeah. So when I'm not dieting, I love, you know, a <laughs> cream cheese thing that cream cheese brownie that they make. Love those. Yeah. So there's, there's literally something for everyone and it's so family, it's family, good family fun. And again, an experience, an experience to come downtown. What do you think sets Albemarle apart from other small towns in North Carolina? We're very friendly. I mean, I'm sure other downtowns are too, but everyone here just kind of looks out for each other. We're really special too, because we have down or Albemarle in general, but we have Mar Mountain State Park, literally 10 minutes down the road, Baden Lake, Lake Tillery. So this is a great place to land because you kind of have so many different resources around you to enjoy. How, do, how does traveling to, to towns like Alamo, in your opinion, enrich travelers understanding of like different cultures and different communities because certainly traveling to small towns in the Carolinas and the South is, is far different than other places in, in the country. I think anyone that would come here, they would definitely pick up on just like the kindness. We, we actually want to know you. We kind of want to know your story. We want to you, we want you to be able to leave and feel like you know us as well. So, I mean, I think that's definitely something that you'll find here, just us seeking connection with one another. And that's really lost, especially in big cities and that sort of thing. But here in downtown Albemarle, I think we all want that connection and want to know, you know, what brought you here, what will bring you back. <laughs> and we want you to get to know us as well. How do you think travelers can ensure that their presence has a positive impact on places like Albemarle? I mean, definitely shopping local. I mean, in shopping small in general, every business down here is small. It is a family run. A lot of woman owned businesses, a lot of mom owned businesses. And we have employees that they're also supporting by shopping with us. We, you know, we can't turn on the lights without them. So yeah, definitely by shopping small. How do you think small towns benefit from tourism and visitors? I mean, Albemarle is very close to Charlotte. Do you feel like you get a benefit from the travelers coming into Charlotte or do you see more travelers coming directly to Albemarle? I think we definitely have, we have a lot of people too that have like a home on the lake, but live, Mm -hmm. you know, in big cities. So I do think, I do think that a lot of people are seeking a smaller town vibe, a small, not so Mm -hmm. much craziness, that sort of thing. Where can our listeners find you online and in person to check out some of the amazing products that you have and also the amazing things that you will be doing in the near future? So we, you can find us here at our, in downtown Albemarle, 127 South 1st Street, right across from Baden Brews. Online, we have a website, make it personal by mm.com. The mm is actually for like when I first started, it's my name is Mary Margaret. So I wanted to like keep it personal. And that's why I named it that. And now I'm like, wow, that website's like really long. So <laughs> yes, you will find us at make it personal by mm.com. We are on Instagram the same way, make it personal by mm and Facebook. And I think we even have like a Pinterest page and a TikTok, but you know, we're, we're, we're trying to work towards posting more on those, th- those platforms. <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> One at a time. My goodness. It's like, whew. Now, can those that don't live locally, can they order online? Absolutely. We offer free shipping on $100 or more. And yes, we can ship to them all day long. And I will make sure that I link to your website, your social media, okay. all on the notes of the this episode. And I have one more question. I ask everyone this. Do you have a favorite quote or any words of wisdom that you would like to leave behind with us listening today? So I see lots of quotes because 
of, you know, I print shirts all day and lots of people like quotes on t-shirts. But when I first got started, I saw a quote and it's stuck with me ever since. And that is great things never come from comfort zones. And I tell myself that a lot, especially with you know, like putting myself out there on social media and that sort of thing and trying new things in the store. I, you know, nothing great comes from sitting in your little comfy space. So I think that's the great quote for life in general. Yes. I live by that. I love that. Thank you so much for being with me today and taking time. Yes, to chat thank with you me. for chatting with me. I look forward to meeting you in person soon. Yes. I'm really confident that not only your experience with the store, but also your experiences previously will touch a lot of people that that hear it through this episode. And I'm confident that you're going to do amazing things. Oh, thank you so much. That means and a lot. I can't wait to come and get some shirts and, and yeah. hoodies. And I, I love graphic tees and things yeah. like that. So. Well, then you are, in fact, my customer. <laughs> I wore a new one yesterday that my son got me that said, uh, good moms say bad words. Yes, 100%. I would agree. I tell my toddler that all the time. I can say them, but you cannot. Right, exactly. (laughs) Thank you so much.